Hey everyone, it's Rosette, and I'm back today with another decoding. This one is on The Truman Show. So let's begin. So as most of you already know, once you took the red pill, you stay in Wonderland. But you have to continually seek to see how deep the rabbit hole goes. Truman shows us this journey. He is at first asleep, blue-pilled, until he turns 30, then experiences his awakening and doesn't stop until he gets to the end of the rabbit hole. What is so iconic about the Matrix is that it was the first time we learned that we have a choice to awaken and seek the truth or to stay in La La Land and enjoy our servitude. Notice the red pill is on the right. You always figure left and right from the subject's perspective. Neo taking the red pill means he wants to learn the truth. Truth is of the right of Christ. Lies are of the left. The devil is the great deceiver, liar. Blue is the color associated with the moon and Lucifer. Taking the blue pill keeps you asleep, keeps you a slave in the matrix. Now let's take a look at Truman's journey through the red pilled lens. We are first introduced to Kristoff, the creator of this world. Notice creator, or created, is written with a small c. He is not the creator, God. His name Christov can be scrambled into of Christ. But is he of Christ, or are they trying to trick us here? He is a controller, a deceiver, and a manipulator. So who is he? A faux creator a faux Christ. That's what the name Christov really means. Faux. F-A-U-X Christ. Fake Christ. Right? So if you just take the O-F off the end, put it in the front and flip it, you have F-O Christ. So phonetically, faux Christ. Speaking on Truman, Christoph says, while the world he inhabits in some respects is counterfeit, there is nothing fake about Truman himself. He admits his world is counterfeit, is fake. Kristoff is the deceiver, Lucifer. From John 8:44, it speaks of Kristoff. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there was no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for his is a liar and the father of it. We then get introduced to Truman. Truman Burbank is his name. Truman is a true man, a real man, one who is just living his life, not manipulating others. His last name is Burbank, as in Hollywood, Burbank Studios. The corporation, dead entity, owns Truman. He is hooked into the system from the day he was born. He is their slave. Burbank. The owners of the corporation are the same owners of the banks. They are of the seed of the serpent and control this world for a time. Notice the beehive in the mirror. They even put honey colored liquid in the jar so there is no mistaking what this represents. We have to behave in the beehive. Our world is a beehive. We are the little worker bees that keep the system running. Without us, the system collapses. 
They have to keep us under control through manipulation and fear so we don't figure out that we have the power to make it collapse. We are then introduced to Truman's wife, Meryl, played by Hannah Gill, they tell us. If we look up the meaning of the name Hannah, it means favored or of grace. But notice also that it is a common Jewish name. Hannah or Meryl plays a big part in keeping Truman locked down in the Matrix, trying to keep him from waking up. Just like the Jews do, right? So favored by whom? Well, she works for Kristoff, so I would say favored by Lucifer. Hannah is a palindrome. When written forward or backwards, it spells Hannah. And although there is nothing wrong with palindromes, they can be innocent, but the adepts like to use them because to them it makes a word much more powerful. Notice Meryl's necklace here. Do you see what's on it? I'll share the answer in a little bit. Notice too she's wearing black and white checkers here. They can be done with the actual words or with how a word is written, making it look like a palindrome. We have these three examples from the Da Vinci Code. Illuminati. The four elements, earth, air, fire, and water. And angels and demons. And here are a couple more examples. Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump are in the same palindrome. What are the odds? Never odd or even, which is a palindrome too. We're then introduced to Truman's best friend. He confers with what Kristoff is saying. Marlin says, It's all true. It's all real. Nothing here is fake. Nothing you see on the show is fake. It's merely controlled. And he's telling us the truth there. It is controlled. Controlled by the hidden hand. Kristoff. What's sad is Marlin is part of the problem. Marlin is an anagram for normal. They are telling us that it is normal for Shabos Goys to sell out for their own personal advantage. Marlin could have woken Truman up any time during their lifetime together, but he chooses not to. Christ told us this was a war of the spirit, not of the flesh. This is what he means. Ephesians 6.12 For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Marlin is being spiritually wicked. And his last name, Coltrane, is phonetically Coltrain, C-O-A-L, Train, T-R-A-I-N. It makes me think of President Snow's Coltrane in The Hunger Games. And the train humanity lived in in Snowpiercer. All controlled systems, controlled worlds. They next show us how long the show has been going on, ever since Truman's birth. Day 10,909 is year 29.887671, so just shy of 30 years at this point. 30 was the age of Christ when he started his ministry. So this is Truman's, Christ's, journey of discovery before he starts his. 
Here is Truman, still blue-pilled, going about his daily routine in the Matrix, the show. He waves to his neighbors and says, In case I don't see ya, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. One of the programs the Seed of the Serpent is pushing is, Diversity is our strength. This saying that has been drilled into our brains by constant repetition was originated with the B'nai B'rith, which are the top organization on the Masonic ladder. And this, of course, is the communist program. Mixing up all cultures of the world so we become one nation. One nation that the seed of the serpent will rule over. Remember, once we are together, we can never go back. We lose real diversity. We lose all the unique countries of the world, their cultures. We become one mongrel race, one culture, one language, one religion, all decided upon by the controllers. So not a good thing. Notice Truman's ring. Does it remind you of anything? How about this? It is the Kaaba stone, or you could say the Kabbalah stone. This would be the stone of the Christ of the Christovs, of the Benai Barith, of the left hand pathers, of the seed of the serpent. It is black and silver as opposed to the red and gold representing the sun or the sun s-o-n christ remember the muslims and the jews worship the same god lucifer see the jews little black cube just like uh, the one at mecca they are moon worshipers remember christov in his moon chamber so Truman is wearing the moon ring on the sun finger. The moon is controlling the sun, or the sun, S-O-N. Truman is Christ. And remember the necklace Meryl was wearing? Do you now see what's on it? She is wearing the Kaaba stone too, just like Truman. Truman is greeted every day by the neighbor's Dalmatian. They like using Dalmatians because of their spots. Spots are seen throughout the Truman Show. The seed of the serpent are the spotted ones. Ephesians 5.27 That he might represent it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Remember Cruella de Vil, cruel devil, and her spots in 101 Dalmatians? The dog's name is Pluto, so we are reminded of planets, and we know Pluto is as fake as Truman's world. Look how they laugh at us, how they mock us. This is supposed to be a recent photo of the planet Pluto. What are the odds that an area on the planet Pluto would resemble Pluto of the Walt Disney cartoons? What are the chances? Never odd or even. They want to make sure you see this ring. Truman is doing the one eye here. He is seeing from his right eye, though. Just like Neo when he opened his door. See how they did that shot? It would have been easier to have him peek out with his left eye. Notice he is behind 101. 101 is the numerical equivalent of laugh out loud, which stands for Lucifer our Lord. Lucifer's realm blue-pilled world before he woke up. 
Remember the cruel devil in 101 Dalmatians? Or the devil's world behind the door in George Orwell's 1984? Winston Smith is in a blue jumper. Now Truman sees an object fall from the sky. He looks to see what it is. He picks it up and observes it is a light. It has Sirius, nine Canis Major, written on it. So they're telling us truth here because the stars in the sky really are lights. They're not planets, they're lights. And Canis Major means big dog. It is the dog star. Notice dog is God in reverse. Like in Albert Pike's Morals and Dog Ma. Dog Ma is Am God in reverse. So followers of Dog Ma of the Dog Star would be of the left hand path. Notice it has blue paint and silver. Blue is the color of the left and silver is the color of the moon. Sirius Satellite Radio has a dog with a star for its left eye as its logo. Right? The dog star here. And the writing is in blue. Notice Satellite Radio. There is no such thing as satellites. Seriously. Ha ha. Notice the shot of Truman bending down to pick it up. They situate him so he is doing this between two pillars. These would be Jochen and Boaz, Justice and Mercy, Sun and Moon, with the dog star holding the center position, the position of control. Notice the skull and the checkerboard floor. Notice Truman's beehive. The two pillars with the dog star in the middle also reminds me of this. The pearl in the center of the two towers in Pearl City here on Oahu. Locally they are known as the mini twin towers. I always think how one day these towers might be ritually taken down as well. Seriously. Here you can see a closer look at the Pearl Radar behind the Pearl Harbor Memorial in Pearl City. And the Pearl reminds me of the Pearl of Great Price, one of four books the Mormons use in their worship. The pearl is representative of the moon. So just like the dog star in the center, the pearl in the center represents the same God. Now they show us a shot of the town from a little ways up. We can see the horizon from here. Notice it is flat. I drew a red line so you can see this clearly. The studio that produced the Truman Show knows the Earth is flat too. They hide it in their logo. Paramount means the foremost mountain, the most important mountain. This would be Mount Meru in the center of our plane. Here they show it with a ring of 22 stars. 22 is the equivalent of the zero in the tarot deck showing the journey of Christ in this realm, the journey of Truman. But like every good symbol, they usurp it and use it for Lucifer. Notice on the tarot card he is wearing a flowery tunic and even looks like he has makeup on, turning him into a he-she, a Baphomet. He is holding a white rose in his left hand. White roses are associated with the left. Red roses are associated with the right, with Christ. It is the fool's journey. Truman is playing the fool, trying to fumble through life, trying to figure out the truth. 
and there is a dog with him, a dog star. Now remember the pearl of great price I mentioned a few moments ago? The radio announcer says, this is Classical 5 on Classical Drive. So why don't you forget about the pearls of swine? Settle back and let this music calm you down. Pearls of swine? What an odd thing for him to say. The announcer wants Truman to forget about the pearls of swine, but the Bible tells us the opposite. Matthew 7, 6 Give not that which is holy unto the dogs. Neither cast ye your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet, and turn again and rend you. Turn again and rend you. Is that what is happening today with the flood of the serpent, flooding Europe, flooding America, rending us because we cast them pearls, help the world out? Yes. This guy wants a copy of Dog Fancy Magazine. He fancies Dog over God. Dog Fancy. Fancy Dog. The KC Chicken here reminds me of KFC. KFC is an anagram for F-C-K or fuck. And when I see the letters K-F-C, I think of kill fucking chickens. Sorry. But who are the chickens? It says free range above. Free range slaves? I would say we are the chickens that they fuck. They fuck us over. Sorry. Two for one doppelganger special, says Truman. Notice the gals behind dress the same, like they are doppelgangers as well. And notice these two are spotted ones. James one twenty seven. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. Here David Rothschild is showing he is spotted and proud of it. It's interesting he mentions doppelgangers too. Do we all have doppelgangers? Several celebrities seem to have had doppelgangers in the past. John Travolta and his. Justin Timberlake and his. Keanu Reeves and his. Nicolas Cage and his. Matthew McConaughey and his. And some seem to have doppelgangers in the present, even with their fellow actors. Bryce Howard and Jessica Chastain. Supposedly, even Bryce's dad, Ron Howard, had a problem identifying his daughter in one instance and thought Jessica was Bryce. Chad Smith and Will Ferrell. Katy Perry and Zoe De Chanel. Margot Robbie and Jamie Presley. Rob Lowe and Ian Summerhalder. Here Truman enters his workplace. Notice it looks like a Masonic Lodge with the sunburst representing the all-seeing eye above the alcove. More proof this is a Masonic building, we have a black ball on Truman's desk. The black ball, or black stone, is used to vote someone out of the organization. If you've been blackballed in Hollywood, it means you will never work there again. Notice Truman's insurance buddy doing the Omega 666 hand sign and with his left hand. Behind Truman we can see the skull and bone symbol used by the Yale Skull and Bonesmen. George Bush and Jim Carrey are members. 
Remember this picture? See with the skull? Notice Truman's Kaaba stone ring is displayed prominently here. I thought this screenshot was interesting. Does this look like a man to you? Were they slipping it in even back in 1998? And notice she's in a red dress. Is this the distractor here? The woman in the red dress? Truman displays his money for his ferry ticket here with the pyramid and the all-seeing eye. They place a sunken boat here to reinforce Truman's fear programming. He saw his dad drown as a young boy when they went out sailing. That is how they control us, through fear. Fear of water, fear of heights, fear of not having a roof over our heads, fear of not fitting in, and fear of death especially. More flatness, another shot of Truman's town, Sea Haven. Now why would they have Truman stick his butt up in the air like that? Because they worship the Anus, the Anus. They are sodomites. That is why they made up the dance called twerking. They want both sexes to focus on this area. This isn't higher love. This is base love. The seed of the serpent is dragging humanity down into the gutter with them. Here Merrill does some product placement, just like they do in many movies today. If the advertising is within the movie, it is much more efficient. It is hard for the audience to not pay attention to their product. So Truman goes with his buddy Normal, I mean Marlin, to hit a few balls off of the pier. Notice Truman is driving a Taurus. Taurus is a sign of the bull. Hats off to the bull, Chevelle sings. Hats off to the bull. The bull would be the ball, B-A-A-L, Lucifer. So Truman is wearing a Kaaba ring and driving a Baal car, all to control him. This is us. And all the way around here is Fiji, says Truman. They show us it's a flat earth, yet they tell us it's round with this ball earth programming, right? Here is little Truman going out for a sail on the day he lost his father at sea. Notice what his dad is wearing, a Kaaba stone ring just like Truman wears, just like on Merrill's necklace, showing that his dad is controlled too. It is generational. This shot was interesting. It reminded me of God reaching out, touching Adam's hand. But here the dad drowns, so it's like God has forsaken Truman's father. Here they focus the shower directly over Truman. Are they telling us something here? Can they manipulate the weather? We know they do cloud seeding and chemtrailing seems to have something to do with this as well. They do seem able to enhance storms and steer them. Hurricane Katrina is a good example of this. It was supposed to make landfall and go north but suddenly turned and went west, right into New Orleans. Here is the before and the after of the Super Dome, representative of our Earth. The next day, Truman heads back to work. We read on the newspaper here, Who needs Europe? And the other guy is holding a dachshund, a German dog. Is this predictive programming? The seed of the serpent is trying to wipe out Europe today, and he especially hates Germany. We have the clergy plan in full force, force of will, going on in Europe today. They are forcing the clergy plan on Europe. They are Luciferians using force of will. Truman runs into his father. 
He is completely shocked, and before he can get a reply from the man he thinks is his father, he is frisked away. Truman chases after the bus, but can't catch it. Notice the dachshund running past him. And behind Truman on the arches it says, Unis pro omnibus, omnis pro uno, which is Latin for one for all, all for one in English. Now the one is the un, an ancient name for Lucifer, the one ruler over the new world order. His thoughts wandered to the past when he was in college and he fell in love with the girl sitting under the tree. Notice here they are connecting Truman with the north. See on the sleeve? The Masons worship the east, south, and west, but never the north. They say that is where evil comes from. Funny though, the north is where the center of this plain is, where Mount Meru is at the North Pole, and directly above the North Pole is the North Star, Polaris, where God's throne is. So this is another way to associate Truman with Christ. Notice Truman's band uniform here. See the lines going across? It reminds me of the metacortex in the Matrix. Truman is at school studying for his finals. Merrill and Marlin leave to let him study. He notices a hand across from him. It's hers, the girl at the tree. Notice the milky stones on her bracelet, on her right hand. They represent the moons of Jupiter. Just like in the Matrix here with Trinity, the moons of Jupiter. And symbolized with Katniss coming from District 12 and being an archer. December is the twelfth month and the archer is a symbol of Sagittarius. The planet of Sagittarius is Jupiter. So the girl Truman likes is associated with Mary partnered with Christ, like Katniss with Gale, like Trinity with Neo. Notice she is wearing red roses. Red roses are a symbol of Christ. And we see Katniss holding the red rose in the Hunger Games. The girl on fire, she is red, gold, fire, sun all symbols of Christ. Coriolanus Snow. Notice the anus in his name and he is symbolized by the white rose. He wears blue. He is in control of the Hunger Games. He is the serpent seed. We see her name is Lauren Garland. Lauren is Latin for laurel tree or from Laurentium. The laurel garden is the wreath of Rome. See it sticking out there? At the height of its glory the Roman Empire was ruled over by the seed of the woman but eventually was usurped just like Truman taken over controlled. How's it going to end? That's the million dollar question, isn't it? But we know how it will end. It will end with Christ victorious, with his enemies thrown into the eternal flames. Lauren red pills Truman. She tells him the truth about his world. She gets taken from him but tells him before she is pulled away to escape and come find her. Before she leaves she reveals her true name. It is Sylvia. I don't understand why he didn't go after her, says the waitress. His mother got sick. He's kind, maybe too kind, says the other. 
But is he too kind? If we were all too kind, what a different world we would be living in. So we have another connection with Rome in the name Sylvia. In myths, Sylvia was the mother of the twins Romulus and Remus, the founders of Rome. And in the 6th century, Saint Sylvia was the mother of Pope Gregory the Great. Truman has her sweater and can smell her. It is his link to the life he wants. But we still see that pesky ring getting in the way. The public face, the wife he doesn't want. Look at all the bricks around the frame. Right? Freemason. The private face, the one he does. So Truman heads to work the next day and experiences a glitch in the Matrix. He can hear the programmers talking about his route, which street he is turning on. The glitch here reminds me of the glitch in the Matrix with the black cat walking across a Masonic checkerboard floor. Okay, he's turning left on Lancaster Square, says the programmer. Now, Lancaster is interesting. It is one side of the War of the Roses, the other being the Yorks. Now, the Lancasters were symbolized by the Red Rose, just like Sylvia's Red Rose, just like Katniss's. The Yorks are symbolized by the White Rose. We also have the connection to the York Rite of Freemasonry. In Game of Thrones, we have the Lannisters of Casterly Rock, or the Lancasters, versus the Starks, or the Yorks. Stark is Star K, or Star Kosher. So they're the Jews in there. They represent the seed of the serpent, while the Lancasters represent the seed of the woman. Yes, they made the Lancasters to be despicable in the show, and the Starks to be the heroes, but that is just classic inversion. They want us to give our energy to the Starks, to them. They trick us into wanting the seed of the serpent to sit on the Iron Throne and rule over us. Notice they show the Lannisters on the right, and they are in red. The Starks are on the left, and they are in blue. Notice too in the screenshot that there is an obelisk in the center. That is part of their phallus worship, and it also looks like a capped pyramid. Truman runs past these two sitting at an outdoor table with two glasses of orange juice. They use orange juice because orange is the only color that equals 33 in numerology, and 33 is the master number of the Masons. That is why the astronauts promoted Tang, a breakfast drink, because it is orange. And they like everything fake, right? So instead of real orange juice, they promote a fake drink. And they show it here on the shelf in The Shining, behind the caretaker, to associate it with Masons and their fake space programs, and also for product placement to make money. Connecting Tang to Danny's sweater here and the fake Apollo mission. So Truman is realizing how manipulated he is. He tests his theory out. He stops traffic. Look at the brickwork under him. Masons all around him. He runs into the nearby building to see what is in there. Omni-com. Omni as in omniscient. All-seeing company. All-seeing eye company. 
Truman is discovering the man behind the curtain. He presses the elevator button and when the door opens he sees the people working behind the scenes. Literally. They escort him out but it is already too late. Truman knows. But he doesn't know his best friend's in on it yet. They go sit on the edge of the pier in their usual spot where Truman confides in him. Maybe I'm being set up for something. Like your whole life has been building towards it, says Truman. Notice the flat horizon line. And now they even show us the moon and the sun at the same time. This could only happen on a flat earth. Truman goes to his mother's house where Merrill comes over and joins them. They look through old photo albums. Notice Truman is the little clown or the little fool like the tarot card. He's wearing spots and he is in a cage meaning he is controlled by the spotted ones. You stay, your favorite show will be on, says Merrill. On the TV we hear, and there will be another episode of I Love Lucy daytime tomorrow. Notice Merrill is wearing a Masonic black and white checkered skirt. And here Lucy is wearing a Masonic black and white checkered dress. Meryl is Lucy. Lucille Ball is a coded name for Lucifer Ball. I Love Lucy is really I Love Lucifer. We hear this narrator of Show Me the Way to Go Home saying, Laughter, love, pain, and sadness, but ultimately redemption. Redemption is a theme we have playing out in Mad Max Fury Road. When Furiosa and Max are at the place Furiosa grew up and sees it is now a wasteland, Max says to her, Let's go back for redemption. So we see Max is the Redeemer, the Christ figure, just like Truman. As Truman is flipping through the photo album, he comes across his wedding photo and suddenly notices that Meryl is actually crossing her fingers, that the marriage was fake. Telling lies but not meaning it is what the serpent seed does best. They use their coal nidra for this. It states, all vows, obligations, oaths, or anathemas Pledges of all names, which we have vowed, sworn, devoted, or bound ourselves to, from this day of atonement until the next day of atonement, we repent. Aforehand, of them all, they shall be deemed absolved, forgiven, annulled, void, and made of no effect. They shall not be binding, nor have any power. The vow shall not be reckoned vows. The obligations shall not be obligatory, nor the oaths considered as oaths. So basically, this means that their word is not their word. Opposite of what Moses says in Numbers 30, verses 1 to 2. This is what the Lord has commanded. If a man vows a vow to the Lord, or swears an oath to bind himself by a pledge, he shall not break his word. He shall do according to all that proceeds out of his mouth. So right there is proof that the Jews do not follow the Torah. They follow the Talmud. More Ball Earth Programming Ball as in Ball, B-A-A-L, Lucille Ball. They know Truman chased after Merrill to see if she is really a nurse. So they have to pretend to operate on a patient. They go to every length to keep Truman in the matrix. 
They use fear porn to try and stop him from leaving. Do they do the same thing to us? To get us from flying? Terrorists, disease, wild animals? Like lightning from heaven? The ring. Notice he is wearing a tartan hat and a plaid suitcase. Tartan is associated with the tribe of Zerah, a son of Judah. Judah is the royal tribe that Christ was born under. So more proof that Truman plays Christ. Notice the license plate on the bus, B9308. 9308 is 9-308 or 9 slash 11, 911. In alpha characters, it would be IK. If you flip them, you get KI, or the Sumerian word for Earth. So the license plate is B Earth or Birth. Birth. Birth on Earth on Sea Haven Island, which represents Earth. The bus is broken down on purpose, but that doesn't stop Truman from trying to escape. All eyes are on the show. Here we have another Flat Earth reference. Notice the umbrella with eight sides. This is how the world is divided up on this plane into eight sections to control us better. This is represented by the umbrella. Rihanna sings about her umbrella. He closes his eyes and floors it, making Merrill have to take the wheel and help them escape. They put up a wall of flames to stop them. Then a nuclear waste spill. But it doesn't fool Truman any longer. They have to run and tackle him to bring him back. They bring Truman home to his crazy wife. Here, more promotion of the multicultural agenda. Diversity is strength. They have a black cop and a white cop. He goes back to the pier with his buddy Marlin. Truman says, Seems like the whole world revolves around me. And Normal replies, Sure that's not wishful thinking? Still trying to keep Truman in the Matrix. Now this is interesting, Marlin says. Remember that time I stayed up all night in that tent because you wanted to play North Pole? Here's another association of Truman with the North Pole. The pole in the middle of our world. The one in which God resides directly above, looking down on us, watching the show. For he has ultimate control. Kristoff is watching from his control room in the moon, not at the North Pole. More proof that Kristoff is not God. He's Lucifer. Kristoff orchestrates for Truman's father to come back into the picture to appease Truman. He believes if his father is back in his life, he will stop his quest to leave. Audiences all over the world rejoice and will buy more Truman Show products, keeping them enslaved to the system. Mass manipulation. Notice here they have Kristoff leaving through a body scanner and two TSAs. More programming for us. If it is safe for Kristoff to go through them, it should be safe for us, is what they want us to believe. But it's not. Don't go through body scanners. Get a pat down instead. I watched a YouTube video recently. I saw Ben Affleck got a pat down, so he knows. He's smart. Sylvia is concerned. She has never given up on Truman, but knows what a master manipulator Kristoff is. 
They show the story of Truman from when he was a little baby. A star is born, it says across the screen. A star is born would be Lucifer, the star that fell from heaven. But Truman is not this star. He is the sun. S-U-N-S-O-N. More programming with the satellite and the ball Earth. And then showing us the true Earth under the dome in the very next shot. Remember Hurricane Katrina's Superdome? Showing us the truth here, the dome? The Hunger Games dome. Notice it is honeycombed, like the beehive. Stephen King's Under the Dome. Divergence Dome. This one kind of looks like a beehive. They even have the Tree of Life inside this one. Kristoff gets interviewed about his show. The reporter describes Kristoff as a televisionary, designer, and architect of a world within a world. Ah yes, the great architect confirmed. Notice the great architect is doing the hidden hand here. And the control room of the news reporting agency looks just like a NASA control room, showing us the truth that the NASA control room is just a show too. All fake. All counterfeit. Kristoff, let me ask you, why do you think Truman has never come close to discovering the true nature of his world until now? Says the reporter. We accept the reality of the world we are presented. It's as simple as that, replies Kristoff. The Matrix is all around us, even now in this very room. It is the world that is pulled over your eyes to blind you from the truth. Replies Morpheus. So he's telling us the same thing there, right? Sylvia calls in and complains to Kristoff. He replies to her, I have given Truman a chance to lead a normal life. The world in which you live in is a sick place. Sea Haven is the way the world should be. Ultimately, Truman prefers his cell, as you call it. But the cell is completely controlled, fake, manipulated. This cell is the sick place. Kristoff is inverting the truth. Remember, he is the father of lies. He's the great deceiver. Truman now has a plan. He pretends to be his old self here. If they were listening, they'd know because he tells them he's giving them a freebie. From the control room, we see a model of Sea Haven. Notice it is a dome, a flat earth. Truman pretends he is asleep and sneaks out through a hole he made in the closet. Live on air, Marlin goes after him. Pluto is in the search party. Look how mad Pluto the dog star is now. He doesn't want Truman to escape the Matrix. Truman's fake mom and fake dad call after him. Even his parents he can't trust. The only one he does trust is Sylvia, Mary, Trinity. They are freaking out. They can't find him. They are losing control. They have the sun come up before the moon goes down. Notice again the flat horizon. Kristoff finds him on the sea. Checkmate Truman, because Kristoff brought Truman's father back, thinking this would make him stay. But what it really did is show Truman the truth, that he didn't die in the sea, and that he doesn't have to fear the water. 
So that is his way of escape. The fool fooled Kristoff. That's our hero shot, says Kristoff. Humanity does need a hero. We do need Christ. We can see Kristoff is the great architect of this story. He has the ark, the arch, behind him. Here he is doing the Omega 666 hand sign. The Masons put Christ, Alpha, on an even kill with Lucifer, Omega. Although we know that's not true, but that is what they believe because we know that Christ is both the Alpha and the Omega. Revelation 22:13, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. That's Christ. The great architect comes up in many other films. Ed Harris played him in Snowpiercer as well. Will Ford or Will Force. Force of will is a Luciferian concept that through man's will he can overcome God and become God with a little g. Here Will Ford is trying to force Curtis, who plays Christ in Snowpiercer, to take over the sacred engine. The sacred engine would be just like Truman's world. Notice how the background looks so similar to Kristoff's control room. Also Curtis is an anagram for Curist, and if you switch out the U with an H you get Christ. In The Matrix, Kristoff's role is played by the architect. Neo would be Truman. He would be Curtis. He would be Gale in The Hunger Games. In Westworld, we have another Ford. Will Ford in Snowpiercer, Dr. Robert Ford in Westworld. From West World, we go to Wayward Pines. Pines is an anagram for penis. Wayward Penis. Ethan Burke is getting forced, manipulated, by Pilcher in here. President Coriolanus, Snow, in The Hunger Games. Right, he's the architect here. And they don't all look like nicely groomed men in suits. We also have Immortan, Immortal, Immortality is their goal, Immortan Joe in Mad Max Fury Road. He's the architect in that one. And don't forget Colonel Sanders, That's sim similar to Coriolanus, Colonel Sanders ruling over us chickens. Cluck cluck, KFC. He takes out his picture of Sylvia, of Trinity, of Katniss. Remember, in looking up Sylvia's name, we found that Saint Sylvia was the mother of Pope Gregory the Great. And here we have a Latin name, Santa, or Saint, and Maria or Mary, St. Mary, associating the boat with Truman Sylvia. Of course, too, we can think of it as Truman discovering a new world, the Nina, the Pinta, and the Santa Maria. Like Columbus discovering America, Truman will discover the world outside the dome he has called home his whole life. But not if Kristoff can help it. We're going to be accessing the weather program, says Kristoff's helper. The audience goes through Truman's ordeal vicariously. 
kind of like what we do when we watch movies. The hero, the martyr, he will not give up, even if it means death. Kristoff finally gives in and lifts the storms. Truman has reached the outer rim of the dome. He crashes into it. Another truth he has to process. I mean, that would be a pretty major one, right? We actually got to the end of the dome and hit some kind of wall. He touches the wall with his right hand, showing he's of the right, he's Christ. He jumps out and walks around the rim until he reaches a staircase leading up, a stairway to heaven, a highway to hell. Truman has found the stairway, the starway. As he reaches the top of the stairs, we see the sun come out from behind the clouds. But we know Kristoff is in the moon, not in the sun. Some more trickery here. Who are you? asked Truman. I am the creator of a television show that gives hope and joy to millions, responds Kristoff. Who am I? Truman then asks. You are the star, says Kristoff. Well, say something, goddammit. You're on television, he yells. So see, he says, God damn it. He's damning God, right? So he's not God, he's Lucifer. Truman replies, In case I don't see ya, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. He puts his arms out here, and with the silhouette of the door frame, makes the cross. Christ on the cross, freeing humanity setting an example for us, for us to go through that door and be free of this matrix, this control. He overcame his fears and became free. He entered the real world, the one in which he is in control of his life, where we are. Yahweh bless. Take care. speak. I can hear you. Who are you? I am the creator of a television show that gives hope and joy and inspiration to millions. Then who am I? You are the star. Was nothing real. You were real. That's what made you so good to watch. Listen to me, Truman. There's no more truth out there than there is in the world I created for you. Same lies. The same deceit. But in my world, you have nothing to fear. I know you better than you know yourself. I never had a camera in my head. You're afraid. That's why you can't leave. It's okay, Truman. I understand.
understand. I've been watching you your whole life. I was watching when you were born. I was watching when you took your first step. I watched you on your first day of school. <laughs> the episode when you lost your first tooth. You can't leave, Truman. You belong here. With me. Talk to me. Say something. Well, say something, goddammit. You're on television. You're live to the whole world. In case I don't see ya. Good afternoon, good evening, and good night. <laughs> yeah.